whenever you're calling functions, inevitably, you're going to have to pass some parameters to that function. In Swift, it's very standard to pass parameters. I'm going to create a function called add. We'll call it num1 integer, and we'll create another parameter called num2 integer. So you'll notice that we're giving the type attribute of the parameters. So num1 is an int, num2 is an int, and this function is going to return an int. So we want to return the sum of these two numbers. And then within the function, we'll say return num1 plus num2. We've got our function, we've got our parameters, so I can call add, let's say two and two, and then our result is gonna be four, right? Pretty straightforward. When writing functions, sometimes it'd be handy to take any number of parameters in. Let's say, for example, we were gonna write a function add many that would take any number of integers and add them up and return the sum. So let's see how that would look. I'm gonna create a function called add many and create a parameter called numbers of type int. Now Swift provides us with what's called a variadic parameter. So we'll do dot, dot, dot in ellipsis, just like it is in writing. This will tell the runtime that when you call this function, you could provide any number of integers to it, comma separated, and it'll pass in a collection to this function. So within here, I'm gonna create a total variable to hold our total, and we'll say for number in numbers. So this will run, and for each element in that collection, we'll say total plus equals number. So this will just add up the total as it loops through that collection, and then we can return total. And I think the only last thing to do is we need to set the return type of this method to int. And now, add many can take any number of parameters. So we create add many, and I could say one, two, and that'll work. Or I could say add many, and I could do one, two, three, four, five, six. And our function, capital M, will run through that and add them all up. So again, that's called a variadic parameter, and can be very handy when building multi-purpose functions. When dealing with parameters in Swift, another feature allows us to keep our code better organized and more self-explanatory. If you've ever used any of the Apple APIs, you've noticed that the function calls are sentence-like. They have a fluidity to them, self for row at index path. Statements like those, where it tells you a little bit more about what the function is actually doing. In Swift, you're allowed to create external parameter names, so when someone calls your function, they have to use those external parameter names in the function call. So for example, let's create a function that will divide two numbers. So I'm gonna say function divide, and my first parameter will be an x, and we'll make it of type float. The second parameter will be y, same thing of type float. And the reason why we made it type floats is we're gonna return a float number. Most integers aren't going to divide evenly into each other. And then we will return x divided by y. And that'll be the output of our divide function. Pretty straightforward. You've seen that, it's basic math. But let's say we're gonna call it, and I could say divide four and two. And it'll return two, because two goes in the four twice. But that's a little vague. We don't know which number is which and things like that. So if we wanted to make this a little more descriptive, we can use external parameter names to accomplish that. Now, I've been dealing with basic math, and I'm gonna take you back to your grammar school days a little bit more. When we divide, we divide the dividend by the divisor. So the first parameter in this case is the dividend, and the second one is the divisor. Let's say we wanted to make this function call more expressive so people totally understood what these variables were that are getting passed in. So what we can do is before the variable name in the statement, I can call this dividend, and that will be the external parameter name for the x variable. And then I'm gonna call y, I'm gonna say by divisor, y. And you'll see why I structured it this way in a minute. So we're now gonna have two parameters, and when we call it, we actually have to use these external parameter names. 
they're mandatory if you define them on a function. So now, when I call divide, I will say dividend 4, and then by divisor is 2. So now, you get a much more descriptive looking function when you can read it, where I'm calling divide this dividend by this divisor. And this way, when you're reading through code, you understand what the parameters are and how they're formatted based on the function call, which is really helpful for code readability and understanding functions that you may not have written. So this is a great way that you can share the intent of a function call without having to write documentation.